Hey guys, ViperStrix38 here, and today guys, I'm going to give you my Monday Night Raw review of last night. The last Monday Night Raw before WrestleMania, which is this Sunday. A four-hour event, which I think is kind of long for a WrestleMania. I think it should be three hours, but for some reason, they think they need to have it four hours, and they need to have like a two-hour kickoff, which to me, who the hell watches the kickoff shit anyway? I don't watch the kickoff, but anyway, WrestleMania this Sunday, last Raw before... Uh, WrestleMania, and here how it went. So, to start off Raw, and this was a historical moment because Sting kicked off Raw, and he talks about um, his match with Triple H, and he, uh, he was talking about his match with Triple H and saying about how Triple H manipulated um, his way through his throughout his WWE career, etc., etc., just talking trash about Triple H. And then Stephanie McMahon interrupts him and reminds Sting of the Monday Night Wars and about how WWE beat WCW, but that she gives Sting credit for being loyal to WCW, but then she says that dogs are loyal too, and she's basically calling Sting a dog, all that shit. And then Sting calls Stephanie a spoiled little brat and that she was just spoiled with everything that she got in WWE, etc., etc., um, then Stephanie tries to slap Steen in the face, but Steen blocks, but Steen blocks, her, blocks the slap and grabs her arm, blocking the slap. Um, then Triple H comes out and Stephanie re goes underneath the ring and gives Triple H a sledgehammer. Um, and then right as Triple H is trying to get into the ring with the sledgehammer, Steen pulls out a bat from out and I mean, he just pulls a bat out of his coat or whatever. So... Sting has a bat, Triple H has the sledgehammer, um, Sting's egging Triple H to get in, into the ring, Triple H, as the cowardly heel, backs down and walks away. So, I thought that, that, I thought that was a pretty cool moment, seeing Triple H and Sting, both with their respective weapons, um, staring each other down until Triple H walks away. Overall, a really good segment to start off Raw, I mean, it, it, it caught my interest right away with this segment. So a really good segment to start off Raw. Then we had Dean Ambrose and R-Truth versus Luke Harper and Stardust. Ambrose and R-Truth won. Uh, don't, didn't, and we also had, with Bad News, Baird on commentary. Um, I didn't really care too much for this match. I wasn't much. Um, so. Then we had Darren Young, Eric Rowan, Zack Ryder, Ryback, and... Titus O'Neil versus The Miz, Miz Dow, uh, Adam Rose in the Ascension with Bill Simmons on commentary, and um, it was actually kind of cool to see Bill Simmons talk with uh, Michael Cole and them and talk about the WWE product. Um, I sort of know Bill Simmons a little bit, for, well, I mean, I don't know him personally, but I've seen him on ESPN, so I kind of know how he is, but uh, it was kind of cool to see him on commentary. Um... But again, this match I didn't really care a whole lot for. I mean, it was okay, I guess, but I mean, I don't really care. I didn't really care that, that much about it. Um, and this was so stupid. Next, we had Randy Orton, and the fans got to vote on the WWE app who he could face. It could either be The Big Show, Kane, or Seth Rollins in the J&J security. That was the dumbest thing they could have ever made for the WWE app. I mean, really? Who wants to see Randy Orton versus The Big Show? Who wants to see Randy Orton versus Kane? So, of course, the fans go with Seth Rollins and the J&J &J security, but as I kind of predicted, Seth Rollins was not going to be in the match at all. It was just going to be his J&J &J security, and they pretty much just got d destroyed by Randy Orton. So, it was just... Uh, I didn't care for this segment. I thought this was a complete waste of time. If anything, Randy Orton should have just tried to attack Seth Rollins again, and Seth Rollins cowardly runs away or something. You don't... I mean, yeah, I didn't care for this. Um, and then we had Paige versus Nikki for the Divas title, and, and the reason why is because Nikki wanted to give her, wanted to give Paige or AJ a title shot, and Paige thought that she should get a title shot because AJ's been gone for so long, and she wanted to, and Paige wanted to get revenge on Nikki and win the Divas championship, all that, um... So anyway, we had Paige versus Nikki for the Divas title, and Nikki Bella retains because um, when AJ attacked Brie, um, 
Paige came up from behind to tap her on the shoulder for I don't know what reason. I think just to, like, get her attention. And then um, AJ doesn't even see her and whacks her in the face. And then Nikki pulls her in. Nikki grabs Paige, throws her in the ring, then gives her the rack attack. Um, anyway, though, it was a good diva match. One that, once again, lasted longer than five minutes. I mean, this match was at least ten minutes long or so. It went through commercial break again the second time now. So maybe now WWE is finally learning their lessons on the Divas. If they give us Diva matches that last 10 minutes or longer and they go through commercial break, it lets the fans get invested in the match. And I mean, the fans were actually invested in this match. Um, I think I even heard the crowd chant at one time, very vaguely, I could hear them say, this was awesome, or this is awesome. And I mean, I, I don't know if I just am getting selective here or what, but I mean, let, let me know if you guys heard that too, but... Um, either way, though, I heard the crowd chant, this is awesome, for a Divas match. I don't think I've ever heard that before for a Divas match. At least not in the PG era, like today. I, I've never heard the crowd chant, this is awesome, for a Divas match. So, hopefully the WWE will continue this into WrestleMania with, uh, with Paige and AJ versus Nikki and Brie. Um, I, for one, I mean, I'll give my preview and predictions on Friday or so, so look forward to that, but... I, for one, think that instead of a tag team match, they should have just had a fatal four-way. They should have had Brie versus Nikki versus Paige versus AJ for the Divas Championship. I think that would be a little more of a good match than a, ta than a tag team match. Especially since the tag team match doesn't really mean much. I think the Divas Championship should be on the line. Not Yeah. But anyway, it's good to see the, the WWE finally giving a Divas a chance, and the crowd was actually getting invested in the match. They were cheering for Paige, they were chanting, this is awesome. Hopefully WWE will keep this up, and hopefully the Divas can keep this up too. Then we had Snoop Dogg come out, and he talks about WrestleMania and Snoop Mania until Curtis Axel comes out, and he, and he talks about Axel Mania and about how it's better than Snoop Mania and all this shit. Until Snoop Dogg surprisingly brains out Hulk Hogan, which I was kind of surprised about. Um, but it was good to see Hulk Hogan. Um, and Hulk Hogan asks Axel what he's smoking because of this whole Axel Mania thing. He's asking Snoop, you you know better than I, than I do. What is it, Curtis smoking or something like that? It was, it was pretty funny. Um, and eventually Curtis Axel tries to punch Hogan until Hogan blocks his punch and punches him back. And then Snoop throws uh, Curtis Axel out of the ring. This was an okay segment. I, I was a little hesitant about it. When I heard Snoop Dogg would be on Raw, I was like, oh, Lord, what are they going to do? Are they going to pull another Wiz Khalifa shit on us? Luckily, that did not happen. Um, but anyway, one thing i got to say, though, is that Snoop Dogg has got to cut down on the weed, man. He, he's got to eat some more. That dude was skinny as fuck. I mean, I don't know if he's anorexic or what, man, but he is skinny as fuck. Dude needs some food. <laughs> Smokes a little too much pot. <laughs> um, then we had Los Matadores versus Tyson and Cesaro with the Usos on commentary. Next, I didn't really care too much for this because we see the same... I'm getting kind of tired of the tag team division because they keep on having the same teams face each other. Until WWE brings up some more talent or until they have some new competition. Yeah, I didn't really care too much for this. I mean, I, I don't mind Tyson and Cesaro as champions, but when they're facing the Los Matadores... I don't really care to see it. Or when they face the Usos repeatedly, it gets kind of boring. Then we had Rusev versus Jack Swagger. Rusev won. It was a decent match. Um, after the match, Cena tries to attack Rusev because Rusev has Swagger in the, in the accolade, I think is what it's called, yeah. And um, so Cena tries to attack Rusev until he pretty much gets beaten down by Rusev. Um... And Rusev stands tall, so to me it's pretty obvious now that John Cena will win at WrestleMania, but I don't really have much of a problem with it, like some people do. I mean, if he wins at WrestleMania for the United States Championship, that can only bring more prestige to the championship, since that he is an All-American and all that, so, yeah. And then we had Bray Wyatt cut a pretty cool promo about his match with Undertaker at WrestleMania, who's basically talking, kind of, it's kind of been the same thing, you know, he was talking about how uh, if I can remember much of it, he was saying about how, well, I, I can't really remember too well. He was talking about, um, about how, uh, 
The Undertaker is pretty much going to rest in peace at WrestleMania for good, and how he's going to take The Undertaker out of his misery, he's going to give him Sister Abigail and all that shit. Um, so anyway, a really good promo by Bray Wyatt, and he was also talking about how he is the new face of fear and all that, and he had, like, lightning, or he had, like, thunder and light, well, not really lightning, but he had thunder, you know, in the, I don't know what you call it, but he had thunder while he was talking, and, um, I, I don't know if it was thunder, but he had something, he had some kind of sound effect, um, during his promo, which was pretty cool, I think it was thunder, but, um, anyway, I'm really looking forward to the Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker, I just wish that The Undertaker would have showed up at least once for one of these Monday Night Raws before WrestleMania. I mean, pretty much Bray Wyatt's doing all of the work. But I can kind of understand why they want to keep The Undertaker off until WrestleMania because we're all expecting to see The Undertaker. We all want to see on how he looks. If he looks any better than he did last year when he got destroyed or not, when he got beat by Brock Lesnar. So I kind of understand why they're keeping him off Raw. But at the same time, to me, it would help out the product if they had. The Undertaker on at least one of the Raws, but we'll see him at, at, at WrestleMania. Um, next, Kevin Nash gets inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame as Diesel, or Kevin Nash, I don't know what it is, but either way, um, pretty cool. Congrats to, Ke congrats to Kevin Nash. I hear Mick Foley will induct him into the Hall of Fame. Maybe I'll watch the Hall of Fame this, this year. I usually don't, but I might this, this year. But uh, congrats to Kevin Nash. Uh, then we had Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan with Dean Ambrose as guest referee. And this was another WWE app vote, but I was actually okay with this one. It was actually kind of entertaining to see Dean Ambrose as the guest re referee. Um, and Dolph Ziggler won in a pretty good match, um, which is to be expected because him and Daniel Bryan are good wrestlers, so it makes sense to have... To, it makes sense for them to have a good match. Um, and after the match, all the latter... All the Intercontinental Championship ladder match participants brawl at the end to climb the ladder, and then the ladder just gets tipped over, and everybody's lying on the floor unconscious. Um, this was this was an okay ending. It was kind of nice not to see somebody grab the Intercontinental Championship yet. Um, and I'll give my preview and predictions for that match on Friday or so. Then we had Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns face to face, and pretty much Paul Heyman was basically saying the same thing. And this time he's like. If I haven't sold you already on this match, then I don't know what will. And he's basically talking about how... He's basically repeating the same thing about how Roman Reigns, the Samoan badass, does not stand a chance against Brock Lesnar. And he was saying something about how Roman Reigns would basically have to... Um, what was it? He'd basically have to take Brock Lesnar's wife, take the food out of his children's house, and do all this sh stuff to beat Brock Lesnar. And he's saying that Roman Reigns is not capable of that. Um, and then Roman Reigns comes down to the ring, and him and Brock Lesnar are standing in the ring, and now, at first, this was okay. At first, Roman Reigns, when Brock Lesnar holds up the title, Roman Reigns grabs it from Brock Lesnar. But then, and, and then I was like, okay, wow, that's pretty bold of Roman Reigns. Now, Brock Lesnar should beat the shit out of him or give him, an, give him an F5. And then the crowd will think, oh, I don't know if Brock, I don't know if Roman Reigns can beat Roman, or can beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Do they brawl? No. They play fucking tug of war like children with the title. Which to me was, a, which was, which to me was just so, such a terrible ending to this Raw. They could have brawled a little bit. I mean, it wouldn't have spoiled much at all. They could have brawled. Um, and to me, playing tug of war with the title is just too fucking childish. Um, and I know a lot of people felt the same way on that. So I did not really care much for this ending. I mean, every fame before the tug of war for the title was okay. But that's that. But all in all, guys, I thought Raw was pretty good for the last Raw to build up WrestleMania. Like I said, I liked, st I liked Sting kicking off Raw with Triple H. Um, some of the matches they had were pretty good. Uh, like... Page versus Nikki, that one was okay. Uh, Rusev versus Swagger, that was good. Uh, Bray White's promo was, of course, good. Dean, Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan was good. Uh, and then the Brock Lesnar um, and Roman Reigns face to face was good until the stupid tug of war match. But anyway, guys, that's my raw review. I hope you liked my video. Uh, like my video, comment on my video, and subscribe, guys. And look for my WrestleMania preview and predictions on Friday. And I will see you guys then.